klutz when it comes to certain things around the house. And um, I had dropped the iron earlier and water was everywhere. My wife said, you stop someplace and get me an iron. And so there, the iron was in the truck. Well, to make a long story short, um, that evening, um, different uh, members of the community, some who had just come home and those that are in the community understand that, said, uh, Bishop, um, they made a mistake. And uh, that um, we're not going to turn anybody in, but we're going to handle it. Well, if the iron came back first. Um, I was carjacked at about 5.15 and the iron was back at 7. Um, saying somehow the iron fell out of the truck. Um, <laughs> real interesting, uh, but it was the street, and, and I thank God for the police department. They had the helicopters up and all of that, but it was the street um, who notified, I believe, the police where to find the truck. They did about $6,000 worth of damage, and um, I got word from one of my street sources that said, uh, Bishop, um, we're going to, we can't turn them in, but we're going to have to give them a lesson in behavior modification. But here's, here's, here's the reality, here's the reality, that I thank God that everyone did for me because of who I am, but they ought to do it for Miss Jones, yes. or Shaquita, or right. you know, Miss Murray, or Miss Mildy. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have to become community again. We have to become the community that raises each other's children. We like to talk about Afrocentric and say it takes a village to raise a child. But the reality, it does take a village to raise a child. We have to teach our children that it's all right to get a job that you claim you don't want. I talked to a young man that said they're only paying seven dollars and change an hour. I said, well, how many dollars and change an hour are you making now? And he looked at me with this look on his face. None. It's all right to work. It's decent and in order to work. You know, my father used to say something, sixth grade education, but the smartest man I ever knew. He said to me, he said, son, he said, you see your sisters in there? He said, a man may take care of them because they look a certain way, but a man gives another man nothing but a hard way to go, a right. short time to get there. <laughs> and so if you don't work, you have to steal and I can't stand a thief. If you steal and they call me, slap the judge before I get there. I never forgot that. So I've worked all my life. Well, you know that experience, but prior to that experience, I know because I've been with you and many members of the Newark, North Jersey Committee of Black Churchmen, uh, the clergy organization and leadership, um, you know, and, and, and I know that we've tried to have individually and collectively conversation with the mayor of Newark, Corey Booker, particularly with the crime problem, and it wasn't being critical, it was being, what can we do to assist? Here are some suggestions. These are things you don't know. And, you know, how does it make you feel, you know, because there's never really been any real rational, reasonable conversations as relate to the crime problem with the leadership in the city of Newark. And I know you've had that. I've known the mayor has criticized you and your organization and some of your members in the paper, but you haven't backed off. But what, what does that do for clergy leadership who's trying to, you know, who, I mean, you're burying people every day. That's correct. You know, quote, unquote. That, that's what it appears. But can you, can you tell us how, how is that, being a pastor, being a bishop, being the president of a, a clergy organization, being the community that's reaching out for help all the time, that's coming through your doors, uh, people getting shot in your parking lot, you know, uh, give us that experience. I mean, what what, what does you what do you feel? It, it, it sometimes it, you, you just look and say, why don't I quit? Mm -hmm. and, and I can't quit. Mm -hmm. I can't quit. Um, mm -hmm. you, you call City Hall, and 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 pretty much that's all it is. It's a call. Mm -hmm. um, we have yet to sit down with the mayor. Um, Senator, you know you were invited to a meeting. We had the Attorney General here. We had mm -hmm. the State Police here. <laughs> we had the uh, uh, Prosecutor's Office mm -hmm. here. Everyone showed up except the mayor. Mm -hmm. We had elected officials. We hosted the meeting. We had all the elected officials. We talked about what do we need to do. We've even had some gang members from SOS come in, and yet and still, I can't get the mayor at the meeting. Um, just recently, we, we had an event at Rutgers University um, working with the FBI Citizens Academy. Um, Ms. Joan Rivets um, just last week received uh, their national award for a program that will work. We bought an SOS. We, we worked with so many groups within 
and yet and still the mayor wasn't there. Um, one of the things that really bothered me and, 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 and in one of the recent shootings, a young lady that, that, that grew up in the Newark community, went to Arts High School with my daughter, um, sung not only in the Arts High School choir, but, but at some point they came by Paradise Church and sung in the choir. Uh, her father was my bus driver on 9-11 when we actually worked ground zero and took the wounded back um, to the various hospitals in New York and his daughter died in a hail of bullets in the streets of Newark, saving another child, just going out for Chinese food. I officiated that funeral and I didn't see the mayor. And I, 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 you know, it's one thing to want a political office. It's another thing to care about the people. And, and, and so my feeling is that if we really want the same thing, there's enough common ground where we can sit, we can talk, we can do some things. Um, the former police director, McCarthy, said he didn't know whether I was friend or foe, but I'd be brutally honest. I'd rather have that reputation than one that I believe your silence says that you don't care. It's one thing to have wonderful sound bites. Right. It's another thing to show people that you really care. Well, I know well, that the I, numbers in, 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 in Newark, it's been manipulated as it relates to the homicides. Um, the administration always said when, when the numbers go up, you know, I read recently, he said, well, the numbers are down this summer, okay, from last summer. <laughs> but then he would say, well, the numbers are down this year from last year. So depending on what the numbers look like in, in, in a block of time frame, um, et cetera. But President Harris, I know that, that you have concerns growing up in Newark, but, but you addressed this from NAACP from a statewide pr perspective. I know you've had the same kinds of conversation with governors. Um, and leadership in the Senate and, and as well as, as speakers of houses during your tenure. And, and, and I never hear governors, particularly this governor, all I hear is charter school, charter school. I don't hear anything about the violent crime that takes place throughout New Jersey, not just in Newark, but in Camden, you know, um, in Asbury Parks, the, the Gloucester County areas and community, the, north, the northern part of the state, the Passaics, the Pattersons. I never hear the word crime and what they're going to do about it. We have had um, the leadership, let's the Black Caucus, as, as, as Bishop said, the clergy. We have had the, the, the state attorney general in a meeting collectively with the Essex County prosecutor, uh, with law enforcement agency directors but never the administrative side of the leadership at state, local government. Give me your feedback on that and the experiences you have had. Well, 26 years in the military. Right. My last MOS was chemical, nuclear, biological warfare. Okay. When I see people blowing people out of jeeps in the Middle East with drones, mm -hmm. I know that we know a lot more about where guns are manufactured, we know how they are transported, and we know how they are targeted to certain communities. That is not an accident. You have to come to grips with the fact that how can anyone in good conscience, if they care about the people, lay off hundreds of police officers in the most dangerous cities in the country? How do you protect the people? The purpose of government is to serve and to protect. How do you protect the citizens in Newark if you lay off 176 cops? How do you protect the citizens in Camden if you lay off 120 cops? How do you protect the citizens in, in all of the cities? And look where those heavy layoffs are occurring. Not in the suburban communities, in African American, in urban, where black and Latino people live. I think we need to be honest. Ask, does anyone care about the life the liberty and pursuit of happiness for black, brown, and urban people in the state of New Jersey. And I think we really need to get honest in calling people out for what they do or don't do. Everybody knows, and I've seen the mayor in suburban, they love the guy. They stick right. money in his pocket. He's right. pursuing money, and he's being very successful. But the people in the city of Newark are frightened to death to even walk outside of their apartment. It doesn't impress me if the crime rate goes down, but two doors down, there was a drive-by shooting and people got killed. Right. Uh, burglaries really do count, but you can't tell me crime is getting better when people in the neighborhood 
are frightened to come out of the house, but people drive into Newark for uh, sporting events, and it's like every two steps there's a cop. Who pays for that? And at what price? So I think we need to understand that we're probably not going to get a whole lot of anything from this mayor but sound bites. If you really want to stop gangs, you better sit down with the gangs, the gang leaders. They'll be honest. But you can't improve a community where you have 40% of the people unemployed. You can't organize people who are struggling every day for mere survival. And you can't improve the quality of schools where kids are frightened about going to school, in school, and getting back home safely. We shouldn't have to live like this. These are civil rights issues. But I think we've got to come on this and be more focused on self-protection, self-improvement. For example, I live in Montclair. If I dial 911 and the cops are not there in three to five minutes, mm -hmm. somebody's got a problem. Okay. I ask people in Newark, if you dial 911, how long will it take the cops to get there? They said 20 or 30 minutes if they come at all. Well, if I'm a criminal, and I know I got 20 minutes. Not only am I going to break into your house, I might as well have a snack. Because I know I'm going to be gone before they get there. That, Bishop? Well, you know, the, the thing that's amazing, and, 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 and James is 100% correct. The latest thing they have is that, well, is he still there? If, 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 if We'll take the scenario that he broke into your house. No, he's gone. My stereo's gone. My TV's gone. My jewelry's gone. If I have any, they say, well, um, you can go online to whatever the website is and you can type in and somebody will get back. Well, they stole my computer. So I guess I need to get the facts. It's not going to be an investigation. And, and that, that's a reality. Um, the other thing is that uh, I, I received a phone call from uh, one of my members. They live in Crane Village. Um, there was a shooting. Seven people were shot. Well, when I asked about it and inquired about it, I said, well, there was only one shooting, seven <laughs> victims, one shooting. One shooting. Yeah, right. um, so how, how do we play the numbers? Now, the, the other piece of that was uh, they ask you questions. I've called in the police myself. Um, and unless I call a number, and, and, and let me say this, I thank God that I have access to the brass. I thank God that they'll come. But, but Miss Jones ought to have that. Fu Quan ought to have that. Uh, you know, everyone should have what I have. The reality is, and, and I'll take a, just a recent incident. Uh, two weeks ago, I was on my way to church. I'm coming down 14th Avenue uh, by South 12th Street, I believe it is. Uh, one of the uh, churches that's there, the pastor had called. There was a uh, BMW partially in the street, glass all over the place. Another one up on the sidewalk. Um, he had called um, for three or four hours. They had not moved the cars. They had not cleaned up the glass. Um, and, and there was nothing he could do. And now we have, I'll use the word, Mother Jones arriving. She's got a walk in broken glass. They can't park by the church because the car is partially in. I watch patrol cars go by, and I don't blame them because they get assigned their tasks. Um, what's in queue um, gets rated, and depending on the priority, they're told where to go. Um, at night, and I've heard this directly from some of the commanders, there's only five cars available in an entire sector. And so if one gets an arrest, another one gets sent to the hospital, you now have three cars for a whole sector. Well, this accident happened somewhere, from what I understand, at 5 o'clock in the morning. Here it is, 9.30, four and a half hours later, in front of a, an African-American church. The pastor has called, no response. I called, directed the mail to his credit. I called him. I have access to him on Sunday morning. Um, he responded immediately and said, I'll have it cleaned up in 20 minutes. That doesn't make sense. Why should Jethro James, president of Newark, North Jersey Committee of Black Churchmen, have to call the police director when any citizen, but more so a pastor, it wouldn't happen if it happened on Clifton Avenue in front of the cathedral. Wouldn't have been a word said. Right. It would have been cleaned right. up. It would have been done immediately. And, and you want to tell us that things are better? You're telling us that because something happens in our community, we're not that important? Well, you know, you mean see, we have community. to have an intolerance for inequality. Exactly. We have to have an intolerance for inequality. Uh, when I sat in that Supreme Court listening to the arguments, what, what I realized is that there are a lot of people in this state who really don't believe that you can make the schools in Newark 
and Patterson and Asbury Park equal to the schools in principle. They don't believe it can happen. And well, we've gotten to the point where we don't believe it can happen. That's because you have a movement, and we're going to try to get to it on this program. The privatization movement that started back in 1955 is literally spending millions of dollars to convince people through slick documents that all schools are failing the public sector, and therefore you privatize. And so it, what the, the whole idea is to diminish the belief and have the faith. But, but on the crime issue, uh, President Harris, the NAACP, you have chapters all over the state. You're very much involved at the state level with this. I know the mayor of Trenton, and it's not about who you like, yeah. and it's not about um, um, where the dollars are in terms of when you come into an administration, but Trenton has some real serious problems yes. right now. And, and the reason I raised the question about Governor Christie and others is primarily because um, I don't hear a voice when it comes to crime. The Obama administration had to pass additional dollars to help get some of these police officers hired back in the urban communities in, in particular throughout the state. What is your take on that right quick? Because I want to try to get to some issues that I know both of you have been working on um, that's just impacting the state. My position is this. If white folks don't live in dangerous communities, they're not going to put the resources there to keep them safe. Okay. Okay. And that's the inequality that we're talking about. Because they don't live there, they don't experience, there's a perception that criminals are just born that way. They're going to be that way. So there's nothing you can do to stop criminals from being criminals. That's not the case. Unemployment contributes to that. Poor schools contribute to that. But there's a society built around the, the pipeline to, to, from the schoolhouse to the jailhouse is real. That's why at the national level, Ben Jealous, thank God, has created a criminal justice committee and part of it is establishing better rapport with local police, but it's also having people respond in a particular way to inequality of police protection. For example, uh, we need to establish the type of relationships in our community where people are looking out for each other in the community and to say certain things won't happen in this neighborhood. But that's community watch. But you got to have people committed to telling the truth, but they also got to be self-protective. Well, I know that Senator Turner, Shirley Turner, and Assemblywoman Bonnie Watson Coleman are, are very much concerned yes. and, and really somewhat, I would say, angry, at least frustrated as legislators trying to help the, 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 the state capital of Trenton. Yes. And no help seemed to be coming from state government. Forty-two million and dollars came out of the budget right away. Exactly. And I know that, but what the system did was try to um, demise politically a single woman Bonnie Watson Coleman for trying to correct systems to make sure that people come out of prison, don't get back into the violent crime scenario, and got crucified and criticized unjustly. Those of us that stood up on her behalf, and I challenged the Democratic Senate caucus on that for not speaking out, um, and, and I mentioned that on the floor of the Senate, but it was never in the media that she did the right thing and the bills work. And, and she's not to be blamed as an individual for what government is not doing. But there are other issues that impact our communities besides the crime that both of your organizations and each of you as individuals have been working um, very, very digitally on and, and, and take very seriously. And, and some of those issues happen to be um, this whole affordable housing issue, the mortgage foreclosures that's plaguing us, and I believe that's going to be another big wave of foreclosure because the banks have kind of guiding the, 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 I guess the, the ceiling that we put on them has been lifted uh, um, so they can go out for foreclosures now. Uh, I know you've been working on you know, things uh, such as the takeover, the merger, and the privatization of Rutgers and UMDNJ. We, we, we're talking about local control here in the city of Newark, where Newark and Patterson are only two school districts out of 600 that's taken over. And by the state's own documents, now, it, it indicates that we shouldn't be under low control, but yet when we pass everything, the state said we're still not going to turn you back over where you can control and help establish your own destiny for these kids. Senator, Why don't where two is of you the, where, talk about those issues? Where is now? the biggest budget in Newark, with the municipality or the school board? School board, basically. What do the party in power focus on more than anything else? Money, Money. and wealth. That's why you, there's no discussion about returning the almost billion dollar industry in the city of Newark. What did they take over in Newark, Jersey City, and Patterson? They took over the budget. 
Where is the improvement in academic achievement? Where is the uh, achievement in terms of health? But they also took over elected officials, people That's that correct. the taxpayers actually go out, whether you like them or not, saying we want to vote for these people to represent us on the, on the school board and our various school districts. Well, don't get like me started about Newark now. And then all of a sudden they <laughs> said, well, we're going to take you over your vote. money. You're going to take over your money area in Newark is a billion dollars roughly, and we're going to make sure the people that you elect that you elected, have no says so, they're going to be advisory. And that's, that's, that's the problem. But, but if you play by these rules and you get 80% or more in these categories, once we assess you, we will give everything back. When Newark did that and they said, well, you know what, we'll, that's wonderful, Fish, but we'll give it back to you in three years. We'll take another look. Three I mean, years. I mean, Who's going to be in the state house in three years? Well, it's not even the state house because if you really look at the Newark Board of Education, um, paths may be slightly different. The majority of the people, over 100 plus people, are brought in downtown someplace are consultants from New York and from the privatization movement. But 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 how how but do we fix that? Here's what? what I've discovered in the short term looking at state. There's only three things that's truly respected. One is money. Okay. Two is brute power. Can you hurt me or help me? And the third thing that's respected is a lawyer. We are going to have to take anybody, whether it's the attorney general or the governor who break the laws, to court and let the judges decide what is right and wrong. If CUSAC says at some point when you've met the criteria you will have that return to local control, that's embedded in either a regulation or law. If it doesn't happen, let's go to court. Let me jump in on this too, James. I, I totally agree. I believe um, not only in Newark, but the late Dan Gaby. Um, when I met Cory Booker, I met Cory Booker as the vice president of BCAP. He was brought here for this purpose of privatization. That is the reality. That is what he did prior to coming here. I've been to, out to Milwaukee many years ago, looked at the schools. There was money floating around and someone met with me in the city of Newark and said, Pastor, said there's a trough of money. And I said to him, coming up in the South partially and back every summer, we fed hogs and, out of troughs. And so uh, I, I don't think my people are pigs or hogs. And, and that's one of the things we sell ourselves out. And in the same vein with that education, you have to look at what they're trying to do with UMD and J because that's still education and Rutgers. The reality is, and I've said this on several occasions, there's a Newark agreement. Newark, North Jersey will file suit yes. if they try to get around and I hope that the NAACP and everybody else will come uh, in conjunction um, with us and a partner with us in this lawsuit. Um, I was part of the Vodulos Commission. The problem was back then was they needed, and this was during the McGreevy administration, they needed about three to four billion dollars to even consider this. And so this governor has no money. There is no money around to do this. What is it going to do to the city of Newark? There was promises made in that we gave up houses and lands. Um, I, thank God I worked with the late Miss Louise Epperson and, yes, and, and worked yes, with yes, other sir. folks. They were the folks that helped me cut my teeth as a social worker. And so I know about these agreements, have copies of them, the, uh, the late Dr. Edward W. Verna and others. Yes. And so we're looking at this. This is all about money. I knew when PSE&G, where I worked at, um, gave $5 million to build a children's hospital in New Brunswick when New Brunswick does not have the infant mortality numbers of Newark that they were trying to put together a new paradigm that we lose jobs, we lose economic development, we lose a first rate health care system and so we become like a third world country with the poverty, with the lack of jobs, the lack of housing and the lack of hospitals. That is something that we're going to be looking at um, from every perspective statewide, Senator, because the reality is in my uh, recent appointment as uh, a social action director for 
the full gospel churches in the state of New Jersey. Health care is an issue in all our communities. It goes across all faith lines. It goes across um, color lines. It goes across everything. And the reality is that somebody has to stand up and say, this is the line in the sand. The next question I have dealing with crime, it's a crime when we don't have any statement from the mayor of the city or the council in the city, and I know it's, it's forthcoming, I hear that, hmm. but the mayor in the city, when we've been at the meetings, the mayor has never showed up. There is, these are his quote unquote people. There is, I believe, a deal that's already cut. If you want people to be healthy, you make sure that they're medical facilities. What happened to Orange? Who's in that town? What happened to Irvington? Who's in that town? What happened to the hospitals in Patterson? Who's yes, in sir. that town? And what happens to the hospitals in Trenton? What happened to Mullenberg? And not only are these hospitals health care centers, they're also the largest employers. So when you close a hospital, you are in fact making some people unemployable for the rest of their lives. But you diminish economic opportunity, employment opportunity, and now there's no place for people to get well. If you go up to a university hospital, there's a triage that you will sit there for hours right. simply trying to get your emergency done. And of course, when you turn, if you separate the university from the hospital, it, the university hospital is going to become 100% charity care. How do you get out of that? You sell it to St. Barnabas. Well, how does St. Barnabas make money? You got to destroy the unions. Well, we reduce know, the uh, cost. The, 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 the whole key, when the Chen organization was operating effectively, um, the institutions, Rutgers, NJIT, Essex County College, UMDNJ, came together. And that's how we were able in Essex County to, in Newark, to build that whole University Heights area and Science Park area. That's right. Um, and there was some fairness there and there was some pain as well. We shouldn't be talking merger of any institution. Right. We That's need to correct. be talking collaboration. That's what that was, the collaborative effort. But as I read the paper, it becomes clear to some of us in the legislature and some members of the Black Caucus um, that when you look at South Jersey, the leadership down there is pushing um, to do a North Jersey grab of health care facilities. But then when you look at people like George Nacross and others who saw on some of the boards of these facilities and, and, and has a business program that could fit into these things, it becomes clear, even in education, what is going on down in Camden. You know, what we're going to do, I know we're going to be wrapping up soon, probably in a couple of minutes, but I want our viewers to know that I'm, I'm going to do all I can to put together a, a program um, for the viewers and where the whole discussion is going to be about um, local control of schools, um, it's going to be about the merger of a health care institution such as Rux, UMD, and J. But just as importantly, we need to have a whole discussion, which will probably be a series of discussions, of the privatization movement yes. that started back yes. in 1955. I am convinced that if people really took the time not to look at little quick blurts, but if someone was to educate uh, the public, the general public, particularly urban community, um, as we teach in school from a textbook, this is program number one, chapter one, we're going to tell you about the movement. This is program number two, we're going to tell you about the participants, so forth. And so I know that we are wrapping up now, um, but I'm going to have that, and I'm going to certainly let the viewers know today, I'm going to have both of you back on. And, and I'm going to try to bring you both on at the same time again, because I think you have interesting conversation. And, and also you represent two of the most powerful organizations of civil rights that we need right now. Well, I just want to tell folks they need to join the NAACP and they yes. need to join the church because these two things can lead to a better quality of life for all. Well, we, we have to wrap now. I, you know, they tell me I have to wrap. I just want to thank the viewers for tuning in and I want you to continue to watch this program. We're going to talk more about the subjects you heard today and the privatization movement and what's taking place that's impacted your quality of life in New Jersey. Once again, thank you. On behalf of the members of the New Jersey Legislative Caucus, from Trenton to you.